Welcome to the Crazy Time Podcast. I'm Jonas. And I'm TNT Don. I'm IT Explosive One. Let's crack into another one. TNT. Yo. I want to talk about a very special topic today. What you got for me, D-E-I. baby? DEI. Okay. Oh, look, I've been waiting. Equity and inclusion. I've been waiting, Jonas, as a black American to get into this for a long time. Let's go. Okay. For, how do you feel about it? What do you mean? Just how do you what feel do you, what do you about mean by the that? DEI initiatives? What do you mean, how do I feel about it? What do you mean by that? I, uh, you as a person, what how do you, do you feel in your mind about DEI initiatives? I feel like mm, they're so... You can't just... Such a weird question. Um, How do I feel about DEI? <laughs> The fuck? <laughs> like, listen to that question. Like, you're just like, imagine asking that at a presidential debate. <coughs> how would Joe Biden answer that question, Jonas? <coughs> I'm not going to ask you how Trump actually, no. How would Trump, yeah, exactly. It's a weird ass question. All right. Well, I just want, I was baiting you. So, it's anyways, fine. I'm baiting. So, the real story. I think it's good. I think, Should like, I, I love, I love the, um, the, where where they're coming from, where companies are coming from by doing it, I, I like, you know? But I think a lot of companies do it because they, they feel they need to. I don't understand what you mean. You mean implementing DEI? Yeah, like like trying to like make, spread awareness of different cultures and different minds. Spread like, awareness. Like all of that. Like, you know, like so just... So the spreading awareness is only one facet of it as well. It's like the hiring of those individuals to front-facing in your... Uh, yeah, so yeah, I don't know. Yeah, there's a lot. There's a lot. But, but you I think th you think it's good in some I think cases. It's, I think it's in in theory it's good. I think the a lot of companies do it because they feel they have to, not mm -hmm. because they want to. I think mm. there's a lot of like we should be doing this. Mm. You know, cuz a lot of like and I think it, a lot of it came about really big a few years ago. So if okay, go ahead. I'm sorry. I'm not going to interrupt you. Well, no, I was just going to say, and and it's it's interesting because there was a giant push for it, and as time goes on, it seems to get less and less and less at a lot of companies. Not every company, but I think a lot of companies did it because they felt they needed to. So if a, so, it's a good thing. We've we've decided that it is it is a positive thing. Oh yeah, I mean, I think it's good to help. Un help people understand cultures and people and all sorts of stuff that but, they don't know about. But we don't like it when companies are disingenuous about it. Well, yeah. Do you like when anybody's disingenuous about what anything? What if what if all the companies told you to start eating vegetables? I would if I wanted. But to? they really didn't want you to start eating vegetables. They just you know wanted you to. They just wanted to sell vegetables. I don't like that either. Okay, but is eating vegetables bad for you? If these companies are doing something, maybe it's disingenuous, but it is beneficial to your physical and or mental health. Is it a bad thing? Yeah, no, I don't think it's a bad thing. Okay. Yeah. Then I, uh, the defense rests. Yeah. But so, yeah, I mean, just in general, I think it's great that like companies are taking the time to like try to help bridge the gap in some areas that people may need that. I agree that it's ugly when it's disingenuous as well. But so, yes, it is a good thing. Overall, yeah. Overall, it's good. Yeah. yeah. Resolution's always pure. All right, exactly. So, but that's, that's not the point of the story. So there was a lady, I, I'm not even going to give her name because it, it's, it's kind of an ugly story. She, she was the uh, DEI coordinator, like the corporate DEI person, whatever. It, it's not like a C, D, E, I, O, you know, whatever. I effing hate this. Go ahead. Keep it going. There's so many acronyms, dude. I don't even I, know what she... What, she was like the fine. director of DEI initiative <laughs> at... <laughs> <laughs> she was the Stop. regional manager of the of, of, of diversity, <laughs> equity, and inclusion. She was the D E I C E O PhD M D of Facebook. R N L V N uh, C N A. And also at Nike. For, oh turn, my god. <laughs> two different times. So Turns out yeah. she uh, embezzled five million dollars to support her own lavish lifestyle by creating fake invoices and kick in like cashback kickback bonuses to herself. Uh, and she ended up getting five years in prison for that. What's her name, Jonas? You got her name? Barbara Furlow Smiles. All right, Bar Barbara. I'm gonna, you know what? F it, I'm gonna Google the person. Are you gonna dox her? I want you, yeah, absolutely. I want to know, Jonas, guess what race it is. 
<laughs> I'm not playing. Guess. I already know. Well, guess again. I'm not. I, how can, Barbara, you. Barbara. What? Uh, furlough. F-U-R-L-O-W. Furlough. Smiles. Smiles. You guess. I'm going to say is that she's Hispanic, Jonas. Fuck. <laughs> 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 Fuck! All right, <laughs> damn it! <laughs> what? Damn it! Nothing, Jonas. <laughs> Fine, whatever. Bad American. Uh, absolutely. Fuck. And uh, <laughs> yeah, it was uh, yeah a scheme involving fraudulent vendors, fake invoices, and cash kickbacks. <sighs> it says after being terminated from Facebook, she brazenly continued the fraud as a DEI leader at Nike, where she stole another six-figure sum <sighs> from their diversity. She stole it from the diversity program. <clears throat> that's, where, that's where she stole the money from. On top of it, it said uh, yeah, it was uh so they, they said they, you know, they're, they're, she's spending some time in jail. I think I said she got five years in prison. Yeah, $5 million fraud. So Jonas, Jonas dead ass trying to turn this into the Hodge twins up in here, man. You're trying to turn this into, into freaking, uh, oh, man. You're trying to turn me into cat temp. You're trying to turn me into, oh, man. You're trying to turn me into a Fox News commentator. <laughs> Trying to you trying to make this a gut field episode. It's not Tucker might right here. It's not happening, man. I'm not gonna turn this into a conservative podcast. And as, as hard as you, as much as you want, Jonas. As, as much, much as I want, want this to be a conservative as podcast, much as you want. I'm not gonna. Is that what I want? A, yeah, I'm not gonna do it. I'm not gonna do it because what is it, what does this do? This just looks bad for the whole ideal of DEI because what she had a job that she embezzled money out of. Get the hell out of here. She could have worked in any other department. She could have worked at 7-Eleven. Yeah, and been embezzling money. And as I recall, Jonas, wasn't it freaking Tom Brady and who are the other that were stealing from to build a freaking tennis court? You remember this? Oh, it was uh, Brett Favre. Brett Favre. It was Brett Favre. All right. Sorry, Tom Brady. I didn't mean to put that on your jacket. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Brett Favre. That was, that was uh, you know, taking money from... The program. What's sad about it, Jonas, is really is that the idea of the American to steal from the rich or steal from the poor and give to the rich, that is just still going around. Because even when that chick wasn't embezzling millions and millions of dollars from the coffers that were supposed to be going to people who needed it, she was making way more than both of us. Oh combined. yeah, she was making like yeah. If you're the the head of DEI at the company, you're making six figures. You've got money, so why do you feel the need to steal more? I just don't understand. Because it's never enough once you start getting rich. And I'm sure it's over time. It's like it starts out as just a little bit. Oh, I'll just put this hotel on here. Oh, I'll just put this trip on there. Oh, I'll just put this car on there. Oh, my daughter needs this. I'll just put that. And you know, it feels like nothing, but over time, especially when you're a person of wealth and you start losing like the idea of how much a dollar's worth what's a banana cost like five dollars you know then you get to that point where it doesn't feel like a lot of money but it is when you have 10 when you have 30 million in the bank and you've embezzled six it don't feel like you've taken that much you're not wrong right but it, yeah it's very sad man that's so sad yeah it's oh so yeah it's such a like it's like it it's it i I, yeah, it's like stealing from charity. You know what I mean? It's like working for the Salvation Army and like stealing. To a certain, yeah, it is, man. But mm, mm, mm. yeah, I don't, I don't know. Uh, it's just oof. how. Woo. So, so Jonas, yes, I, we, we're this happened because she's a DEI uh, person who was obviously stealing from the DEI coffers. <laughs> okay, and I'm gonna let you know is that I hate the term DEI. Okay, I hate it. it. Why is that? I feel like it's just like it's basically saying it's been repurposed as an F slur and N word. Okay, wow. That's what I feel like it is at this point, Jones. This is a way another way to say it. Um, kind of like how woke was. Woke was taken from when when we when woke came to the most popular most popularized term analogy in the American lexicon was when Childish Gambino used in that song he said stay woke that's when people started using it and it was basically it's like stay with your mind open your eyes open pay attention because 
they're lying to you, talking about the government, talking about the world powers, talking about your your uh, your churches and like pay attention to what's going well, it's on. Like, it's like, yeah, it's like, wake up. Don't be a sheep. Like, pay yeah. attention to what the hell's going on in the world. Like, but yeah. all of a sudden now woke means why is there black and gay people in this shit? <laughs> that, that That's is. what it is. And frankly, as a black person, I don't know why it always has to be black and gay people. All right, we all got our we all got our roads to to fight, and we got our paths to take. So I don't know why we always got to be coupled together. I'm definitely want to go to every. I will go to every gay march if you come to every black march. I mean, sure. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go to your gay marches regardless if you come to a black march. It's not my gay march. What are you talking about? <laughs> what are you t- <laughs> going to your gay march? Like I'm, I know I'm looking at you, but I'm and speak- saying I'm- it's mine. No, <laughs> <laughs> you're like looking at me and saying your gay march. No, I'm. Just, this is for you know. You hear it one time, but you, like hundreds of people may hear it throughout the, the right, annals right. of time. You'll I'm speaking go to, to them. a gay march. I'll go to your gay march, <laughs> person at home. I'm looking at you, but I'm talking to <laughs> oh, the people oh, at oh. home. You mean just the proverbial your? Yeah. Not, not the Jonas your. And I don't feel like, I don't know, man. I don't feel like there's anything wrong. I'm an ally yeah. to all of the old press. That's what it comes yeah, down man, to. I, I am too. But I do not like these terms that have been like, like when the Baltimore Bridge went down, there was people talking about the DEI mater. Look, brother, just because he's black, now it's DEI. What are we talking about? The term has been repurposed well, yeah, for it, it a racial. That, um, what the hell did they call it back in the day? Because it was a big thing in the NFL about about uh, interviewing black coaches. And like it, was the, uh, it wasn't called DEI. It was called... Uh, what the hell did they call it? Affirmative action. Yeah. So it's basically like affirmative action of today. That's what, if, yeah. And that's, it, it, it is. Yeah. It's, it's just kind of like replaced it. But yeah, I don't know, man. I think that it's a good thing, but I do feel like it can be oversaturated. There was definitely a time like during that COVID time where there was just putting like way too many black people in movies. And I was like, oh, you, you, you fucking up the movement. Like, it's kind of oversaturating the whole, like, there's got to be women, black people, and gay people, and everything, you know? I mean, that, nowadays, that's how every show has, like, like it has, like, a disabled person, it has a gay person, it has a black person, it has a Hispanic person, it has a white person. Like, almost every show now has... A, a, like, and, and, a di- and, I'm, and I agree with that. I feel like that's a good thing, but when it gets oversaturated, it feels like you're trying to trick me. It feels like you're trying to put that sponsor link at the top of my Google search, and I don't want to click it. Oh, I see what you mean. Yeah. I mean, it's like, it's like, hey, look at us. We're doing the thing. So DEI, the revolution is always pure. But when the corpos get a hold of it, when Amazon, Google, Facebook get a hold of it, when Paramount gets a hold of it, they fuck it up. Yes, I agree. So... Anywho, that's all the time we have for this episode. Go to thecrazytown.com, subscribe for uh, Jonas. Do you think? Uh, we out.